Shalom everyone. I want to start today on this fourth day of May 2020 with this serious galaxy far away greeting. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> I don't know if you are a Star Wars fan. I'm actually not a huge fan myself, yet I want to honor those who are though. So may the fourth be with you. Shalom. <laughs> so as we continue our journey through this liturgical, beautiful liturgical season of Easter. Since yesterday, we've been reading in St. John's Gospel about a superhero much more powerful and loving and caring, so much more everything than any Jedi we can find in any galaxy out there. I don't know if you recall, but yesterday we celebrated the, what is traditionally AKA the Good Shepherd Sunday, which falls on the fourth uh, Easter Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter on a regular basis. And today's gospel goes on, like drawing the features, the traces of Jesus, Jesus the Good Shepherd. And it turns out that when we talk about this shepherd who calls his sheep by name and leads them out, we're called to realize that there's something much deeper going on. Jesus declares himself to be at least two things, two things at the same time throughout the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. I am the gate, I am the gate for the sheep, I am the door, and I am the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. So he is the gate and he is the shepherd. And this set of images that the evangelist John presents to us is very meaningful and allows us to enter more deeply, uh, more deeply into the truth of Jesus and, uh, and his work of salvation out of love for us. First things first, the horizon in which the image of the good shepherd fits is that which the gospel itself describes to us. If a man owns a hundred sheep, you remember that? One of them goes astray, he leaves the 99 on the hills up there on high and go to look for the one that wandered off. So the son of God, the shepherd, is actually the one who left the mountains. He left the heights of his dwelling place and went down to look, to look for the, the straying sheep. He went down to look for me and to look for you. And something really Tremendous, uh, stupendous, and huge happens. Our shepherd became flesh. He put himself in the game. He put himself at stake for us, for our sake. And this is what love is about. When one is willing to lose, losing, lose oneself entirely for the other. This is love, and this is the love through which a much deeper reality is revealed. The good shepherd is the one who has taken on something no good. He took on our flesh, our flesh wounded by sin. He is the shepherd who came down to participate in our wounded life in order to heal it from inside and then make us capable of participating in his loving and divine life, his holy life. The shepherd does whatever it takes he stands up big time for us. He made himself a sheep so that the sheep could share in the shepherd's own dignity. He came down because he wanted to be one heart, one flesh with us, living with us in an intimate love that takes over the whole of our life. It is an all unifying love. And that's why the good shepherd knows his sheep and they know him. He recognizes which sheep are part of his flock. He knows his chosen ones, his beloved ones. And the sheep themselves are able to distinguish his voice from any other voices uh, that surround them. He is the shepherd. And also, Jesus is a door, a gate. And what could that mean? Among other things, I, I would say that God doesn't want to jump over the boundaries of our humanity. He is the shepherd and who enters through the door, through the gate. And the door, the gate, is a person, a living person. The door is the Son of God himself. Jesus is the gate. 
In another passage of John's Gospel, Jesus will state that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, he is the way. He is actually the gateway. The gateway. Through him, God, the Spirit of God, the life of the Trinity enters our life. God enters our existence through the door of the Son. And we, in turn, enter God's life through that very door as well. There's no violence. There's no overpowering. What there, what, what there really is, is the freedom of love, the freedom to come and go. As sheep resting on the shepherd's shoulders, we are able to look upwards again. We are able to look heavenwards. It's really booming, blow mining indeed. <laughs> This means that our wounded human nature is a meeting place, a meeting place between the merciful one and the sinner one, between the merciful one and the mercified one, ourselves. God takes on our nature out of love. And now, the sheep, you and I, we can return to the Father's house because passing through the gate, which is the Son of God himself, Jesus, we are clothed in his filial, divine and holy life. We are dressed in holy garments, filial garments. The life of the Son is within us. The striking reality of grace in which the Good Shepherd inserts us is that but by making our fallen and wounded flesh rise up, He raises the fallen world. He fixes, He heals our broken world. He brings into our flesh, into our humanity, the joy and the life that lasts forever. And through our flesh, which is so vulnerable, the eternal, holy, true Word of God, which is so strong, becomes flesh and dwells among us and dwells in us, actually. And from within, He transforms the flesh of the world into a glorious flesh. The earthly city into a heavenly city. Our earthly Jerusalem into the heavenly one. In the face of such beautiful hope, we can't help but exclaim, as the psalmist makes today, a thirst is my soul, a thirst is our soul, O living God. Whoever doesn't enter the sheepfold through the gate, through the door, is a thief, is a robber. So, what doesn't pass through Christ, what doesn't come from Christ, doesn't heal the world and doesn't lift up our souls. So, take us in your arms, O Good Shepherd. Guide us in your living pastures in this path of life. Amen.